Hey, it's Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about what exactly it's like to work at a hat shop. Um, I'm working at one hat shop for 25 years, um, five days a week pretty much, uh, since 1994. Um, so um, I know what it's like. I'm going to just you know tell you what it's like being me, a typical day, what it was like when I first started, what it's like now, um, and that's it. Um, still having my morning coffee, excuse me. So we're going to do another song. Um, this song I've actually played once before, so I'm going to play it a second time. Uh, I count that as still uh, as being unrehearsed. One of these days I'm going to rehearse one of these songs. It'll come out a lot better. But that's that's my thing. I never I never plan the videos. Uh, the subject titles of the videos generally are made up as I'm walking to turn the thing on. Okay, I gotta get a title. What's a good title? So um, yeah, I don't really think these things out. That's just my my style. Uh, I try not to write any notes or anything like that. Um, I did write a couple of notes, so this is the first time I, I jotted down a couple of things here. I mentioned this, 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 about five, six things, so today's going to be, I guess, a little bit different, okay? So, without uh, further ado, let's try another uh, song by Curtis Mayfield. This is, it's just a gorgeous song, uh, Little Child Running Wild. Um, I'm going to use uh, Big Green again today. The Revtron pickups, look at that chrome, I love it. Alright. Yeah, this is for me, this part actually. They're called guitar porn. Those of you non musicians or non guitar players, guitar pornography. You have to just look at them. Alright. It's the vibe. Didn't have to be 
from across the track different for me and that take a little bit of courage for me you know just singing is new for me I haven't really done much singing so um, yeah. kind of teaching myself uh, as this year goes by I figure by the time the year is up uh, I should be a little bit more skillful than now you know? anyway let's talk about uh, you know the hat shop and stuff uh, working there I'm gonna take this off for a minute uh, it's a little hot in here I don't have the air conditioner on I'm trying to keep the window closed for most of it, but it does get really hot in here sometimes. It's the city noises. All right, working, working at JJ's. Um, the the cool, weird thing about working at JJ's is um, you get these kind of like hat groupies. Um, this this is the weirdest thing that kind of got me when I first got this job, you know, it was something that I didn't really understand um, for a little while until I kind of took it all in and got the gist of it. Um, there are certain people, a certain couple of types, you know, most of them are like retired guys, some of them are guys who have problems with their back or with their legs or something like that, and they can't really work, so they're home and they've got a lot of free time and they um, you know, they, they love hats, they're into hats, so the free time plus the bored thing from being retired, having nothing to do, you know, all day, it starts, they, they focus in on us. So, um, I don't always mind it, most of the time I don't mind it. Um, the only time I usually mind it is when, you know, they're taking up lots of my time when there's other buying customers that, you know, need to be helped. Um, 
or if they start like interjecting in my sales and stuff, you know, giving their advice and usually not helping. But um, most of the time, you know, they're really nice guys. Like nine out of ninety-nine out of a hundred times, they're really cool dudes. They're really humble and really nice. Um, but you know, there's a few guys. There's you know, one guy who comes in. He used to sit behind the chair at the register in my old shop with my old pie hats because. You know, he walked with a walker, and um, it was a tiny little shop, my old shop um, in the East Village called Pork Pie, and I ran it myself. Um, I was the proprietor, but I did everything else. I opened all the cases of hats, I cleaned, I cleaned the bathroom, I sweeped it, I shoveled snow, I did the garbage at night, um, everything. And um, basically, I ran the shop. You know, everything was, was me. I put things on display, I answered the calls, I did you know, the sales of whatever, you know, the repairs. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of work. And when those guys would come in, it would sometimes be a little rough for me. Uh, the one guy would come down and he would sit plop right behind the register, right where the cash drawer is and stuff, because it was the only chair in the house. And he used to carry around these packs of saltines. And you could tell he stole them from diners, like whenever he got soup or something, or most likely he'd just ask for them. Um, probably didn't even get the soup, he was giving me some saltines, you know. But he always had saltines, he claimed he had to eat them because he took medication, he needed to coat his stomach, I guess, whatever. But he'd always leave these trails of saltine crumbs everywhere, you know, like, you know, things would open and then just tons of saltines with like lint and dirt and wrappers and all these like, all, kind of like an old grandma's pocketbook, just filled with crumbs, and it would just be everywhere. Take a deep breath because I know I didn't really want him behind the register. It was an unsafe place to have anybody, you know. Um, but I, I dealt with it because he was kind of crippled, you know. And he just used to hang out there. He would stay there for hours while people were coming in, and he would be like my buddy or something. He was my buddy, my friend who helped to run the shop, and he just assumed this position. And eventually I had to sort of kick him out, you know, I had to tell him, look, you know, I know you got to sit down and stuff, but that's the cash drawer, and uh, if my boss sees see anybody sitting there, I'm going to get fired. I was totally lying, you know, but it worked, and he's, you know, he's still a customer, he's still real cool and everything, and he spends, he spends, but nine out of ten times he doesn't, you know, he just comes and he hangs out like all day for hours and hours and hours and hours, so... There's other times I had groupies too, the ones that are, you know, not as intense, sort of retired people. Um, and I didn't get it until, you know, later on when I really processed the thought that here's this old man that wakes up, he's basically, his schedule is like this. Go across the street to Lindy's, get a newspaper. Go to the corner store, get coffee sit in the park, drink coffee, read paper, go visit Kevin at the hat shop, go get dinner at the diner, go home, go to sleep. Now, if I blew him off on that go visit Kevin at the hat shop part that was penciled into his schedule, I blew his whole day, you know, like his entire day. So there, here's a guy, he, he wakes up, brushes his teeth, gets his coffee and his newspaper and everything, his day today was to go visit Kevin. And as frustrating as the guys can be, the groupie guys, um, that's his whole day. So if I if I shove him along, you know, after like the first half hour or the first hour or something like that, his day is shot. So it was really hard for me to kick these guys out or to even say, look, I gotta get back to work, you know, can you just do me a favor and you know give me a little time to catch up on some work. I couldn't do that because they'd be engaging me in these conversations about philosophy and, you know, sometimes they'd be, like, offensive, you know, too. Like, there was this one Hasidic Jewish guy who was used to ask me about my wife, my wife's Japanese, and this and that, and, you know, and what do my parents think about him? And he was getting a little too personal and stuff. Um, and you got, you know, as a, a salesman, you have to gotta be cool, you know? You're kind of a, a public servant. I guess you're not a public servant, but it's, it may be private property, but you're helping the, the public, so you gotta be really cool, you know, even when you're offended. 
Um, working at the hat shop, it, there's there's a lot of downtime in certain times, like at the end of the summer, after everybody's got their uh, their summer hats, and it's just still blaring down, you know, 80, 90 degrees Fahrenheit every day. They don't think about felt hats yet. They've already got their summer hat, and there's this downtime. We call it the dog days. It's kind of like uh, August or end of August, mid to end of which is that time. Um, after the holidays, after Labor Day, where the summer's winding up, but it's not cool enough to think about felt hats yet, there's this little time where we're slow. Because most of the time, if you walk into JJ Hat Center, it's just crowded. It's like always crowded. Not crowded to the point where there's like a big line. There's never really a line at the register. If anything, it's usually like two people, maybe three people. And then Christmas, it can get a little more, like maybe four or five. But we don't really get lines much. Um, most of the time, it's the sales floor is really crowded. There might be like seven or eight salesmen there, and everybody's got like a group. You know, so that can happen. Where it's really, really mild. But there is a little time downtime, generally during the summer. Um, Saturday mornings tend to be early, or Saturday afternoons are really, really, really busy. Um, so we do downtime stuff. We have, um, we fill in the cap cases, you know, there's huge showcases, um, small case, medium case, a large case, an extra large case, double X, and they're filled to the top with caps, you know, stack, 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 tons of them. Um, so we have to make sure that every single cap is in there and that each stack is nice and neat so that they're not all like disheveled and falling around. Um, the next thing we do is we dust hats. The hats on the shelves, um, some of them are behind glass, some of them are not. It depends. One side is, one side is not. So the hats that are not behind glass all get very, very dusty. And, you know, there's a stack of, like, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, six, I'm going to say nine to, nine to twelve hats for each style, each color. So, you know, there's hundreds upon hundreds upon maybe thousands of hats on display, and you got to dust them, um, because they get covered with dust, and if you get a hand somebody, like, a $500 beaver dress hat covered in a layer of dust, it's tacky. You can't do it. Um, like you're not going to go to whatever Fendi or Gucci and get a uh, $500 hat and see dust on it. We have to be the same way. Um, and we have a casual vibe, but we have some pretty high-end stuff there, so dust is pretty much unacceptable. So that's something we do all the time. You walk around with a thing of packing tape, and you you know you just sort of mop them up with rings, of packing tape. Get a brush, get a big brush, and beat the, get the brims, uh, you know, underside of the brim. So there's a lot of hat dusting. Um, making boxes is something that we spend. That's kind of usually, I'm not going to say it's the low tier guy, but generally the newest guy at the hat shop will make the boxes. Um, it's just folding, folding, folding. It's kind of like, um, you can even see there's a video of Kevin making a box in 30 seconds, which is pretty cool, you know. You gotta make the ring inside, uh, you have to make the box, you have to put a sticker on it, a handle in it, and then they come flat, just like one piece of flat cardboard, and it's like an origami thing. So generally, the newest employee is the guy who knows less about the inventory, less about hats, and he's the worst at selling hats, because he doesn't know where everything is, and he doesn't really know much yet. So we have him do those kind of things. He'll be the, the box guy, and every morning when we open up the shop, we have to make boxes because uh, I don't know if you looked at Facebook uh, today. If you look at our Facebook, there's a, a UPS dolly, like a hand truck, of some um, mail orders, and it's only one or two days worth of mail orders, and it's just huge. You know, it's like I don't know, three or four dozen hats in two days. So there's a lot of mail order boxes. You know, you have to make two, three dozen big stacks of, of boxes, and there, you know, a stack is about way up to the ceiling. Um, and then you have to make two, three dozen for the store too, which I only have two big stacks up by the register and we have more at the back. So when it gets really busy, you only have to start making, you know, 
holding pizza boxes in the middle of somebody's you know cell, which also looks tacky and it slows things down. So making boxes is something we do a lot of, and although it's usually a small kind of like a simple task, I like to do it. It's something I really like to do a lot because um, I feel like it's good exercise for my fingers as a guitar player. Um, I sort of have arthritic fingers. You can see they're just sort of like really bony and like, you know, and, um, stiff. So I feel that's like really good exercise uh, for dexterity, agility, and, uh, you know, making things more flexible when they get stiff. I like to actually make boxes. That's one of the things I'm into doing. And also we have to um, flatten cardboard because we can't, we get tons of cardboard boxes at the hat shop. Um, a hat generally comes in something called a six high, which is a carton that's about, I'm going to say up to a grown man's maybe belt. It's about belt high. And inside has little shelves, they're about this high, you know, it's like a shelf. And you put the hat in the shelf, and you put the shelf in the box. So there's six little shelves that go inside the cardboard box. We call them six highs because they'll take six hats. Um, we have to basically rip those up at the end of the week and flatten them for um, recycling and stuff. Um, and that also takes a lot of wrist energy, so I like doing that. Um, although I probably don't have to do it, you know, like every day, I try to grab it, you know. There's somebody else in the shop who enjoys doing it too, so most of the time he gets to do it. But in a certain, you know, I don't really exercise, so I try to get my exercise at work. Um, when I first got the job in 94, I spent most of my time in the stock room. Uh, we have a stock guy now, his name is David, you know, he's young, strong, and then, you know, that used to be me, you know, like back in 94, um, 25 years ago, wow, I was in my 20s, so that's pretty vital, and, you know, there's boxes of Stetsons up to the ceiling, and you have to, you know, do a lot of heavy lifting, and occasionally these, you have rows, kind of like rows of boxes, like a long, long warehouse kind of thing, a stock room, occasionally a stack will fall, and it does this domino thing, the next and the next one, and all the rows full, the entire stock room just goes down like dominoes. That used to happen. Um, it happens less these days. We're a little more organized. And I think there were more hats back in the old days, in the, in the 90s. There was just more stock back then. We had a lot more. There was another owner, too. He used to order differently, but uh, they wound up with a lot of discount hats because he used to over-order a little bit, I think. Mm, but, um... There's downtime. Um, what did I write down here? I took a couple of notes. And there, oh, it's all kind of stupid stuff, I think. Actually, I, I talked about a lot of this stuff, I guess. But uh, whatever, I'm not going to use my notes. I never do. So, um, working at a hat store is most of the time interesting. Usually somebody will come in that I know. Um, I get a lot of people that I know because being there 25 years, there's a lot of people come in, they ask for me. And um, I like to steam hats and shape hats. So when I see somebody walking in with their own hat, I generally kind of bum rush them in a passive aggressive way. I try to help them out because I, I like to steam the hats. It's, it's interesting, it makes the, the day go faster and stuff. Um, so, yeah, and it's an ability to use a little bit of creativity and do something a little artistic and interesting at work. So, um, and I take pride in it too. I like to see the bad hat and, you know, clean it up as best as I can, do the best job I can, and tell them the job is free. It's absolutely free. And I'm like, what? You just like slaved over that thing for 15 minutes, you know, and you're all sweaty and everything. I could see. What's the catch? There's no catch, it's free. Um, we do as walk-ins, you could come in any time and it's free. Um, basically, it's the same thing for mail order too, but you have to uh, pay for shipping. You know, it's $15.50 to ship your hat back to you. And that includes a hat box too. Um, I don't know what else I should talk about. Now, when working at that hat shop is a good thing. Um, it's a peaceful job. It's a uh, positive job. And I feel like I'm enriching the scene in my own small little way. 
Um, it's cool when the celebrities come in too. That's kind of cool. You get sometimes a little starstruck. Um, like, uh, you know, like Bruce Willis comes in a lot and he's kind of like comfortable with me, so he always raps with me. So, yeah, if you're watching Bruce, next time I see him, I'm going to ask if you want to jam. So, I heard he's like a really good harmonica player. And I've seen him a couple of times on YouTube, but I think I should watch him again. So, I'm going to jam, baby. Um, and that's it. I'll talk more about this soon, about the hat groupies what it's like to work at a hat shop. Um, it does get a little nuts sometimes there. Like any retail shop, you know, you see like uh, public freakouts. Um, and you occasionally you get a customer who is not happy. Uh, not that often though. The hat shop tends to be a sort of a peaceful kind of a, uh, a place, you know. It's not like going to Walmart or CVS or 7-Eleven. There's very specific people who go and buy dress hats and cowboy hats and stuff. And it's usually people who care about themselves or buying a nice gift or they're on vacation. So you don't just get everybody in there. We, we're lucky. We get a nice clientele of people. And um, no, we actually don't get that many people going postal or anything like that. You know, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting because at my old shop where I used to work at a sporting goods store um, over 25 years ago, I worked at another place for nine years. We've got a few of those unruly customers and stuff. But uh, hat customers by nature um, tend to be really nice, I think. It's kind of cool. And uh, my viewers, especially my YouTube viewers, uh, uh, Wes, hey, how you doing, Wes? Um, RB, everybody who's out there, Daisy, um, I know I forgot somebody. Uh, Bob, Terry, Patriot, Peter Patriot. Mm -hmm.